Welcome back to Commentary. I am Ari and this is Taylor Tales. Grace Chapter 30. Uh, 30? Oh, I'm, traveling, I'm time traveling. No, 14. Okay, anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I hope this will be interesting because today yeah. we're gonna bring those costumes to the academy. I have no idea why MC is like adamant about not telling him anything of her past with the gang and stuff and keeping him away from the cleaner academy guys and then inviting him, the Phantom, to help her bring something to cleaner academy. Like that makes no sense to me. But okay, whatever. Um. <clears throat> You weren't kidding when you said these costumes were heavy. Grey groans as he slips another garment bag over his shoulder. <laughs> he was hoping that it was not heavy, I guess. There's a little ruff around his neck uh, and a renaissance style hat on his head, <laughs> giving him the look of a, ki uh, of a kid who's just rummaged through someone's costume box and gotten lost in it. Ugh. What did you make them out of? Lead? It's not the material that's heavy. I stifle a giggle and r push him towards the door. Those dresses have four different layers, and I had to make them true to the trim pe uh, time period the play is set in. Did you know that fabric choices in the Renaissance era were a huge part of showing off someone's status? I continue, getting swept up in my passion for the subject. And of course, back then they didn't even have zippers, so people were literally sewn into the dr to the outfits. Imagine always needing someone else to help you get in and out of your clothes. I mean, so, nah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> it's actually true. <laughs> I could get the thought, and Grey gives me an impressed look as he comes up uh, beside me. Huh. Well, you certainly know your stuff, he says with a grin. Hey. And you, uh, if you ever need it, I'm always ready to help you undress. Ah, uh, very funny. And he wriggles his eyebrows suggestively and I scoff off the remark, doing my best to smother my laughter. I adjust the bags that are slung over my arms as I pull the front door shut behind me and ensure it's locked. Grey holds the door of the waiting taxi open for me and we bundle into the back seat and the, cost uh, the costume's too, mu uh, too much too wait, much too heavy to carry all the way to Cleaner Academy. So you just needed him from the 10 meters from your shop to the ca taxi and the 10 meters from... I mean, I guess it's longer from the taxi to like the theat uh, theater hall. But do you want him really... do you really want him to roam around the halls of the academy? I'm so surprised. <clears throat> we sort ourselves out between the garment bags, hats and shoes and the car takes off, the, uh, off down the road. I look over at him and say thoughtfully. You may not care for about fashion, but these kinds of details are important, especially when it comes to an academy production. Grey raises an eyebrow at me, and I am well aware that I am strung together as, as, as usual, tighter as usual. Okay, I just really want everyone to like these outfits. Huh. First of all, who says I don't care about fashion? You've seen the way I dress. He gives me a crooked grin. I know he's teasing me, and I find it difficult to stop the smile that spreads across my face. It's true though, his style does suit him. Hmm. Second, who cares about a bunch of academy snobs uh, uh, thinking about a co uh, wait? Who cares what a co bunch of academy snobs think about a couple of dresses and tunics? With a sigh, I look out the window, watching the familiar buildings pass us wistfully. I'm just nervous. That's all. Wringing my hands together in my lap, I do a last-minute count of all the pieces in my head and pray I haven't forgotten anything. If people like these costumes, they'll come for me f um, for other events, I explain. There's the Academy Ball, the graduation dinner, and the future and future te uh, theater productions, to name a few. Something that settles on my chest like a paperweight, images of the worst-case scenario washing over me. And if they don't like them... Grey surprises me by reaching over and taking my trembling hands in his, holding it tight. Huh. They're going to love them. How could they not after all the effort you've put into them? I let out a slow exhale, smiling at him in return. Thanks. I hope you're right. 
The taxi turns a corner and rumbles along the uh, down the road, the road getting closer and closer to our destination. Mm. Of course. I understand what reputation can do for a business. Ray says adamant, uh, absent-mindedly, looking out the window ahead of us. Speaking of business, I say as I adjust my grip, but don't let go of his hand. I've noticed more people around the basement than usual lately. He gives me a look from the corner of his eye, one that I can't, can't quite decipher. Who would have thought... Who would have thought so many people were into board games? They're not into board games. Oh, come on, why is he so stupid? His lips curve in a way that means nothing. I really want to see them just be them true, their true selves to each other. Okay? Can we just make the clean tables? His lips curve in a way that means nothing but trouble. His eyes gleaming with mischief. Mm. Oh, you would be surprised, he says. I thought that after a little game of jumble, you might be interested in other games. I squeeze his hand in surprise, not missing the insinuation, having spent so much time around him lately. I've learned to expect that some of uh, some kind of flirtatious remark will always follow that smile of his. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Only if you're the one teaching me the rules. I, fl I flirt back, my mouth um, hooking up at one side. Lean, uh, Gray leans closer, the subtle scent of his cologne uh, drifting over me when he brushes a few strands of hair back from my face. Uh. Trust me, I wouldn't let anyone else tell you what to do. He says softly, though his eyes burn with intent. Does he take that as an invitation? <coughs> I can't wait. Actually, you know what? I'm probably gonna pick this one, but I wanna see the other one for once. The driver might hear you. I whisper in outrage, my eyes flicking towards the front of the car. <laughs> Grey cracks a smile, the rubble of, rumble of his laughter vibrating through the leather seats and against my skin. Uh -huh. What's the matter? Afraid someone might find out you're not as innocent as you look. My mouth falls open and I frame a look of offense, giving the ruff of his neck a playful tug. Well, they definitely know that they definitely know that you're as sinful as you look. Hmm. Sinful. He te teases the word on his tongue with a grin, leaning back in his seat. Eh? Isn't that the only way to be? I give him. I mean, I'm a bit sad that I'm always missing out on his like playful um, pushing, but I like to I like to push back so. <laughs> I give him a look that warns him that this is hardly the time to be playing around. We have a job to do after all. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna go back to our actual choice. My breath sticks in my throat as I meet him uh, head on. I worry for a moment that the driver might overhear us, but then decide just as quickly that I don't care. Neither would I, I say, keeping my eyes locked to his. The air between us char is charged with electricity bringing goosebum uh, goosebumps to the surface of my skin. <laughs> Surprisingly, Gray pulls back first and huffs a laugh, leaning back against the leather of his seat. Hmm. Glad to hear it. When I feel the car slowing down, I peek out the window to find we're just arriving at the academy. I mean, he can wait, right? He's patient. He likes to play. This is basically just one big foreplay over days and weeks <laughs> and months, probably. Finally, I let out a breath. After gathering everything up from the back of the taxi, we head towards the gates of the school. Classes are finished for, uh, for the day, though Nikki had messaged me to say the drama club would be rehearsing in the auditorium until dark. Wouldn't, wait. It wouldn't be, okay. Gray stuffs his hand into his pockets, casually looking around. Huh. Feels a lot, le lot less intense since the last time we were here. I stifle a stifle and chuckle. Well, last time we jumped out the window to get away from uh, one of the teachers, which is definitely Nikki, who is still patrolling the place to make sure that the other gangs are up to nothing in the, ca in the academy. He grins at me, his eyes lifting up at the corners. <sighs> I'll, do it I'll do it again. How about we enter the school like normal people this time around, I offer. 
He politely bows and gestures toward the entrance. Oh. After you, milady. I roll my eyes at him with a smile. <clears throat> we enter the auditorium and I instantly spot Nikki in front of the stage, watching over a group of kids as they rehearse a the scene. I recognize it at once. The infamous death scene. I watch transfixed as Juliet picks up a, f a fake dagger and stabs it into her stomach. A ripple of red ribbons stream from her abdomen in a theatrical portrayal of blood, and I'm glad to know that the costumes won't be ruined by any fake blood on the night. Ugh. Can we put these down somewhere? Grey mumbles from beside me. My arms are about to break off. With a amused shake of my head, I, I lead the way down <coughs> I lead the way down uh, the steps in the middle of the building, past rows and rows of seat, uh, seats and my, a few spectators that have come to watch the rehearsal. I watch Nikki's for, uh, form grow closer as we approach, and a thought suddenly trickles into my mind. How am I supposed to explain to him that the Phantom of all people is there to help me deliver the costumes? That's what I've been thinking, you stupid... <sighs> and even worse than that, that we're friends. I've spent too much time worrying about the costumes that I hadn't even come up with a way to avoid the topic. Yeah. Upon hearing our footsteps, Nikki turns out... Uh, our Mm. Nikki turns and smiles wide, his eyes going straight to the bags in her hands. Ah! They're here! He exclaims loud enough for actors to pause their scene. Huh. For the actors. Thanks so much for you bringing them down here, Auri. Uh, no problem, I say with a forced smile, stepping in front of Grey to block him from view. This fades miserably, since he stands over half a foot taller than me, but I don't know what else to do. At least I can be sure that Nikki won't recognize him for from appearance alone. Why though? <laughs> I mean, I guess 10 years, okay. Grey shouldn't be able to recognize him either. Nikki has, was much shorter in his teenage years and definitely had less facial hair. Hmm. You can put them in the first row. I'll have the actors try them. Oh, I hope that he says something about the gang. I have the actors try them on while you're here to make sure they're all okay. Nikki says as he takes on one of the bags from me and leads the way. <sighs> After placing the costumes down and uh, over the seats, directing them to the right people, Nikki lets out a satisfied sigh and turns to Grey. <sighs> I don't believe we've met. I'm Nikki, he says with a smile, shaking Grey's hand firmly. Oh. Um. He's just a new friend of mine. <laughs> I reply, stepping in between them. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna be weird. So, how are the it's going? I ask with a forced smile. Nikki frowns a little, giving Ray a second look before shaking his head and grinning. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'd I'd say we're almost ready for the performance next performance next hmm, performance next week. After a couple of dress rehearsals, rehearsals of course. That's great, I say, and I truly glad I'm truly glad to hear it. He went right grey. Right? <laughs> we walk with Nikki over to the front of the stage, glancing over the props and set pieces. The Academy really hasn't held back for this production. Everything looks so professional and well made. Hmm? You stop by on opening night, won't you? I promise I I, I promised I'd save your seat. Huh. I'm sure you'd enjoy enjoy seeing your work in action. I'll be there, I bob on the spot, smiling broadly. If the glimpse I got earlier has anything to go by, the play is going to be amazing. Ah. Great, I'm looking forward to it. You can sit with me, he says with a smile. Oh, Grey will invite himself then. He will be like, no, she's sitting with me, actually. Beside me, I catch a hint of something in Grey's demeanor as he shifts around. The actors begin to emerge in their costumes and I take out my portable sewing kit, making a sm uh, some small adjustments here and there. Okay, so nothing happened. Okay. Grey takes a seat in the audience a few rows back, pulling out his phone while he waits. I feel bad for interrupting him before. It was rude of me, but I just couldn't risk Nikki finding out who he, who he is and spilling everything. Overall, the costumes fit great, and they look amazing. I get a glimpse of the actors on stage with them, under the d uh, different lights and the bubble of pride swells within me. I did a really good job. Um... Ari, I've been meaning to ask you something, Nikki asks after a little while, coming to stand beside me. From the corner of my eye, I see Grey look up, and I know he's watching the two of us. 
What is it? I ask, ignoring the weight of Gray's gaze. Hmm. I wondered if you'd come and meet me for a drink sometime this week. It's been so long since we've spent any time together, it might be nice to catch up. Oh, uh, sure, that would be really nice. I say, a little caught up on the spot. <laughs> Fantastic. I look forward to hearing all about this boutique of yours. I hope you'll tell me everything. I'll tell you anything you want to know, I say with a smile, sparing a glance at Gray, who has returned to his phone. We should head off, I say to Nikki, noticing him follow my gaze. We'll leave you to your rehearsals. Nikki nods, and I don't miss the final look he throws at Gray before he smiles up at, at me. I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like, are you with him? Are you not? Hmm. Mm. This guy looks kind of familiar. What did he say? Of course, thanks again for the costumes. They really are perfect. After saying our goodbyes, Gray and I head out for the auditorium, neither of us speaking as we reach the, speed, the street. There's a tension between us that wasn't there before, and I hate the way it feels. The sky overhead is quickly darkening, a chill lingering in the air. We've already call I've already called a taxi, though it should take a bit more before it arrives. Huh? Old boyfriend? He asks. I can tell by his tone that he's less than impressed by what happened back there, but to ask if Nikki is my boyfriend, that's really odd. No, just an old classmate. I look him in the eye and smile, trying to sound casual. Hmm. Is that so? He raises an eyebrow, and I don't. Uh, and I know he doesn't believe me. I don't reply, and I'm thankful that he seems to take the hint and say no more about it. <laughs> As we walk down the road, he shoves his hands in his pockets, suddenly letting, letting out a soft laugh. Yeah. I remember this place. He says that he slows looking around. Mm. You know, back in the day, I had a crush on an academy girl. Oh, I turn and look at him, surprise written all over my face. This is news to me. Yeah, because you're stupid. Mm. Yeah, you kind of remind me of her, he says with a dip of his head. Oh my god, can Jesus, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. He toes the ground in front of him, giving me a sly smile. I rack my brain, trying to remember if I ever saw, saw one of the Academy Girls uh, with him. I'm sure I never did. Yeah, because it's you! What was she like? I ask, hoping he will give me a clue. <laughs> she was stubborn, he laughs, and a real pain in the ass, and fucking stupid, and oblivious to everything. <laughs> My eyebrows dip in the middle. He said that I reminded him of this girl, and now I don't quite know whether to take this as a compliment or not. Uh. But she was also funny, and brave, and beautiful. His mouth quir uh, quirks at the way I frown, though I, d I don't know what he has to be so amused by. Because he's talking to that girl right now! Oh my god! I still can't figure out who that girl is. Dude. Hmm. We ended up in this very brush, uh, bush once, hiding from a few gang members. I was trying to do something nice by returning the throne she lost, and in return she bit my head off, he says, smiling at the memory. Oh, I suppose I do know that girl after all. She was me. When I don't say anything, Gray steps closer, his pale hair falling into his face when he stares down at me. Uh. Ari, he says my name, and I can't stop myself from looking, up, uh, looking at him, tumbling deeper into those stormy grey eyes. Um. You trust me, don't you? Not enough to tell you everything. Yeah, that... <laughs> Yeah, because he had asked the same question night after Sunday and I had said yes. Because he wants you to spill the beans that he already knows, at least partially. <laughs> My answer hasn't changed since then, but something about the situation feels different. Yeah, because, like, at one, one dude, he's like, what do I have to do for you to finally speak to me? Like, dude. Like, I wonder, he's like, okay, like, dude, I tried this for, like, months now. 
I just want you to tell me that you are that girl. Alright. <laughs> anyway, back to the script. You seem to put a lot of weight on the word. Is it so important to you? Yeah. It is. Without trust. What else do we have? I'm not sure if he's waiting for an answer to his question, but I find I don't have one, so I stay quiet. Oh, Oh, that's so cute. It looks cute. When he leans in, a hand on my waist, I don't stop him. My heart beating beneath my chest like the wings of a tiny hummingbird. Pray, wait, I... The truth is bubbling up and I can't contain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His nose brushes mine, his warm breath sending a ripple and of chills across my skin. My eyes close, lashes flit uh, flittering across the, tops of, across the tops of my cheeks and I want him to close that gap between us. I want him to kiss me, but he has to know. I... My body draws closer to his. My breath staggers, wait for uh, waiting for the moment our lip lips will touch. <laughs> All of a sudden, the taxi pulls up and my mind reels itself back. Dang it! Why did you waste the C CG on this? Panic hits, uh, hits me harder than a fr uh, freight, tra uh, freight train and I pull away from him. What am I doing? I can't do this. I shouldn't be doing this when I've been lying all this time. Yes, that's why you should stop lying. How about that? Just get the consequences. Just have a fight with him. Apologize, make up for it, and then you're golden. How about that? Hmm? I'm sorry, I say before I enter the taxi and close the door. You're just letting him stand there too? Beauty beast, please. I tell the driver. You just do Oh my god! You're just running- You just let- Oh my god! This main character is horrible! <sighs> Grey is sane for putting up with all of that. Just saying. Grey silently watches me as I leave without him and a feeling of guilt and remorse eats away at me. I'm wondering if I should read these like pre- Um... Pre-launch these routes. I think that I will not do this again actually because if I really hope that this gets edit edited dang <sighs> I don't see gray for the rest of the week after I ditched him, but I know he's been around It's like there's something in the air whenever he is on the premises. I can feel it like electricity crackling against my skin yeah, He's probably disappointed that you're so uh, spine spineless Right like dude just oh my god I still hear the group on their usual nights, and once or twice I've run into Gray's friends as they've arrived to play games. They're always polite, and after Gray banned them from drinking on the premises, they're fairly well behaved, so I have no complaints. All of them, except Ivan, of course. But luckily I haven't run into him again since the night he showed up drunk and missed the game of Dragon Den. And then there's Gray himself. I've been avoiding him, and I think he's doing the same to me. I guess after leaving him like that with a, without an explanation wouldn't make any uh, would make anyone a little peeved. Yeah. Oh, I don't know to be honest. I find myself closing the store uh, later each day thinking he might stop by but he never does. And then I always feel silly for waiting. I should just talk to him first, send him a message, say I'm sorry and, or head down to the basement when he's there alone. Somehow I just can't bring myself to do it. And then I decide, maybe it's better this way. <laughs> Dude, these sounds are like, messed up right now. <laughs> my phone buzzes and my chest clenches, silently hoping it's a message from Grey. <coughs> Do the first move for once. Like, I'm really not impressed with this girl right now. <sighs> when I check my screen, my heart drops. Sarah's name flashes across the screen. Hey, want to catch a movie tonight? I haven't heard from you at all that all week. Yeah, and also like he can't he just he doesn't even hang out with Jed that more that much anymore, right? I mean maybe they did a boys' night or something. To lift his spirits. I can't, sorry, I'm worried under work. Bill Let me know when you're free to hang out. 
Of course. I lay back on the sofa and let my phone drop beside me before I lose myself in another episode of Super Yacht Singles. Singles. What the hell was that? I feel bad about lying to my best friend, but I'm really not in a social mood. And I don't want to have to explain to her what's wrong. Because when it comes down to it, nothing is wrong at all. Nothing was ever going to happen with Gray and I. I couldn't let it. When my eyes drift over to the bottom shelf of the bookcase, settling on the jumble box, I try my best not to cry. What? The taxi arrives at the nightclub. You're going partying? Oh wait, you're, you're going to Nikki, okay. Nikki messaged me earlier today, reminding me that I had agreed to meet him for a drink, and I was happy to see his name pop up on my screen. Going out into the world will give me a distraction from everything else going on in my life. Oh no. I haven't spoken to Grey all week, and I'm determined not to let it ruin my mood. He will find you, somehow, or like, or desti uh, destiny will make it. <laughs> I find bad about uh, blowing Sarah off last night, and then meeting up with Nikki, but it's easier this way. I know that Nikki won't cry. I can't mope around on my couch wait, uh, watching, TV, uh, watching reality TV forever. The bar we've meeting at is on cleaner uh, um, academy territory and used to be a frequent haunt of the gang once they were old enough to drink. I've avoided it for a long time, afraid that I might run into too many familiar faces, but right now I'm not seeing a whole lot of familiar people at all. In fact, given the look of some of the people hanging around here, I might think they might be Riversiders. Oh no, the hammer will be here. Attentively, I enter the building looking around for Nikki's familiar face. I spot him sitting on a stool at the bar and he smiles when he sees me. Ah! There you are! He greets me with a hug and a kiss on the cheek, gesturing for me to sit by beside him. Hmm? What can I get you? Just a glass of wine, thanks, I say as I shrug uh, uh, out of my coat, hanging it over the back of the bar stool. Glancing around, I see even more unfamiliar faces inside the bar, and more than a few of them are looking my way, sizing me up. I pull my hand back close. The bartender sets a glass in front of me, and I take a long sip of my drink. This week has been strange, and too mu and much too long. Meeting up with a friend shouldn't have come at a, bitter t a better time. Couldn't have. Nikki smiles, waiting for me to set my glass down again before he speaks. Hmm. So, uh, how are things with you? How's the business? He asks, and I can tell by his tone that he's generally interested. It's going great, for the most part, I say. I s I'm still building up a client base, but I'm sure I'll get there eventually. Hmm. If your craftsman craftsmanship with the costumes of any indicator, I don't doubt it. Nikki raises his glass to me before taking a sip. It surprises me how much he's changed since before. He's much more eloquent with his words. He's really grown up. I smile, thinking of the costumes I've made for the play and feeling a little twinge of, of guilt. Although I've enjoyed making them, I had my own personal motivation for taking on the job. I have to be honest with you. My intentions when making the costumes were enti weren't entirely noble, I admit, and Nicky cocks his head in interest. Oh. Oh. I swallow around the lump in my throat, giving a nervous laugh. I was hoping that if people liked my work, they might commission me to tailor the outfits for the academy events. <laughs> Nikki laughs out loud, and though the sound catches me off guard, it c uh, chases away a little of the gold. <laughs> Jeez, Ari, you had me scared. I thought it was something serious. Yeah, I mean, that's of course it's, brand it's branding and like advertising. <laughs> Well, hey, the school blog will be doing a write-up of the performance. I'll make sure to include your details in there, letting them know who's responsible for the costumes. Really? I almost choke on my drink in surprise. That would be amazing. He gives me an amused look. He likes crink uh, he, his eyes crinkling behind his glasses. <sighs> we are still friends, aren't we? It's only natural to help each other out. I nod through my smile falters a little. I've already helped him out with the costumes for the play. That must be what he's thinking about. And what about you, Professor? How's teaching? Go uh, how's the teaching gig going? Leans against the counter, getting comfortable. <sighs> Honestly, it's great. The kids are the best part, even though they're always getting themselves into trouble. His eyes light up when he speaks. 
Oh, what kind of trouble? Hmm. Well, about a week ago, a couple of boys from my class managed to swipe the keys to the princi principal's car and fill the air conditioning up with confetti. Yuji was furious. <laughs> he chuckles at the memory and shakes his head fondly. <laughs> Man, it was near impossible to keep a straight face when she showed, told me about it. I almost wish I had come up with the idea first. It sounds just like the th uh, kind of things we got up to, to at school, I say with a laugh. Do you remember the time we broke into the groundkeeper's shed and covered everything in bubble wrap? <laughs> <laughs> like it was yesterday. He was a good guy, though it was hilarious. Nikki chuckled. <gasps> what about the time we let ourselves get locked in the library? And camped out overnight, yes! Apart from Sarah attempting to scale an entire wall of books and almost knocking it over, that was the best night. <laughs> she was crazy back then. Nikki pushes his glasses up and wipes at his eyes as he chuckles. Oh, she still is. We laugh together, w uh, ordering a couple more drinks and reminiscing all over our old men memories. And there are a lot of them. It's good to hear that kids these days haven't changed much. Hmm. They really haven't. Hmm. And besides all of that mischief, the rivalry of, uh, with both Riverside as high and the capo is still going strong. Strong. I don't think that will ever change, I admit. My smile slowly fading. <coughs> Nikki looks away suddenly, clearing his throat a little before he speaks. Um. You know, as much as I, as I loved catching up with you, there's also another reason I asked you to meet me. What is it? Uh. I don't know how much you know about the old gang, but there's a few of us who still hang out, keeping an eye on our territory. I should have known it was something to do with the gang. As if sensing I'm already beginning to close off, Nicky leans forwards, his eyes finding mine. Uh. Things started getting bad a few years back. The Hammer and Riversiders took over almost, all, um, over almost our entire territory. That's why I've seen so many unfamiliar faces around here tonight. Uh. He nods in confirmation. Most of the gang were too afraid to stand up against them after you and Sarah left us. Over the years, it's been getting worse and worse. I don't know what this has to do with me. Nikki runs a hand through his hair before speaking, seeming to look for the right words. Uh. The gang is still loyal to you, Ari. I wanted to ask if you will come back and fight with us again. We could take back our turf together. Oh no, I cannot do this, man. I'm out of the business. I'm out of that. Yeah, I left that life behind me. Sorry. <laughs> I left that life behind me ten years ago. Like I mean, I miss I miss the I miss the guys and stuff, but like I don't miss that part. Okay. I left that life behind me ten years ago. I have a business to think about now. I say sharply, staring uh, staring him down to drive the point home. Nikki hesitates, and it seems like I still have some of my old spirit, though I can't help but be annoyed that this is the reason he called me here. Yeah. Was this your plan all along? Fill me with drinks and then press your idea of reforming the gang onto me. <laughs> it's not like that. He holds up in hands, hands in, innocent, in innocence. Not exactly. Then why don't you don't you explain it to me? I say impatiently, tapping my fingers against the bar. He gives me a look, and if I didn't know any better, I'd say he might be impressed. I guess that old gang leader is still in in me. Is still there somewhere inside of me. Deep, deep down. <sighs> It won't be long before the Riversiders' presence causes trouble for your business, I guarantee it. I think that already happened, actually. Um, he fidgets his emptied glass, rolling the bottom across the bar. Mm. They're out on their own. Uh, wait, they're out of. Mm, they're out to own everything in the city. They won't stop. So the Riversiders are probably the ones that I mean I was already suspecting uh, Ivan, but like he would try to break in, right? And like, I mean we could just bond like Academy Cleaner Academy and the Capos together against Riversiders. How about that? Like we have the two leader already in love, so or like in lust. I don't know. <laughs> and did the did the Capo gang? I asked. Not sure if I want to hear the answer. <sighs> They've been laying low. But rumor has it that the hammer has them in the palm of their hands. 
Whenever the Riversiders come on up for let come for the last of us, and they will, you can be sure that the Gakapos will be on their side. Why don't I tell him like I don't think so? I have it from like my own sources that um they are not on friendly terms, but they watch they're eyeing each other suspiciously. But why? Why would they work together? Uh, I mentioned the Hammer and the Phantom have been up to something, right? Mm. I think they're planning on getting rid of the last of Academy Loyalists, ridding us from the board completely. I want to believe that Grey wouldn't do something like that, but I know that he w uh, what he was like back in his prime. I saw it with my own eyes. But how would he benefit from something like that? He spends his time running a board game room- Come on! Then again, why is Ivan so involved in the same group? Maybe the gaming is just a way for him to blow off steam, but I can not never be can never be sure of it when it comes to him. Uh. They're dangerous, Ari. More than they ever were, he says, and I swear that I see the hand from his, uh, around his glass tremble. I'm afraid what could happen to, uh, to us all. Nikki has always been serious about stuff like this, but I've never seen him so scared before. I mean, yeah, Sarah got stabbed. Dude, that was 10 years ago. The none of this makes any sense to me. I have no idea why you would Ivan let, like, in your presence at all. I can't, Nikki. I'm sorry. I left the gang for a reason. Uh. I understand. He dips his head, defeat, uh, defeat finally washing over him. Uh. But if you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. Thankfully, he drops the topic for the rest of the evening. That would be a fun talk. Like to Grey next. But, come on! I'm so annoyed. Just talk to Grey. I'm sorry for always being in a bad mood, but this is so annoying! Okay, that's the end of the chapter. Tune in next time again if you want to find out if she, if she finally spills her beans or is like smarter. If she got a brain cell. How about that? Okay, well, anyway, um, see you next time. Bye!